and welcome to Adventures in Regression Therapy with me, Steve Burgess, and my colleague and team member, Monique Glover. What we thought we'd talk about in this um, short discussion is what we call um, surrogate regression, which is very new. And it's something that even we've only been doing it for the past couple of years um, and experimenting with it. And it's something that I think could be very big in terms of uh, the possibilities for healing of all different issues. And what a surrogate regression is, is actually working on one person for somebody else. So um, the surrogate work is well known in, uh, in uh, kinesiology, uh, Reiki, uh, and EFT as well uh, with, with tapping. But to my knowledge, it's not been done with regression, or if it has, it's nobody ever talks about it. And how I got into this um, was a, I got a, a colleague in, uh, in Ireland who contacted me um, mm. and she said that uh, she bought a dog recently, a rescue dog, and the dog was beautiful. She said it's almost like a spiritual dog. It knows things, you know, it's a very wise <laughs> animal. But she said at times she's an absolute pain in the backside. Um, you know, she said she's difficult to be around. She follows me around all the time. She's very insecure. And obviously that's as a result of her, uh, her background. Uh, you know, she's seen some tough times as a rescue dog. She said, do you think it would be possible? Because obviously we can't go hypnotizing dogs to, uh, <laughs> to do regression on a dog. But do you think it would be possible for you to take me into trance and do regression work for the dog and i'll be the dog you could say in trance so i thought well no idea that's very unusual but we can give it a try if you like so we booked a session and uh so i took my colleague and my client into trance uh checked with her subconscious that it was okay for us to do this work for the dog and it said yes and the subconscious indicated that there were quite a few traumas in this lifetime, as well as some of past lives for the dog. So, um, so bear in mind, you know, my client is, is laying there in trance and I'm saying, so let's, we went back into the into a past life and she saw herself. This is my client as a male Nazi prison guard in a prison camp in the second world war and she had a dog um so she was a guard she was guarding the camp and she had a guard dog with her, or he had a guard dog with him all the time and of course the dog was the dog now so um and it was a horrible experience she said we spent all day long going around the perimeter and checking things and trying to stop anything breakouts and you know, generally being brutal, which is, of course, what used to happen in those uh, environments. And what happened is this young man, after some time, was very unhappy with what was going on in the camp. So he helped some people, to some of the prisoners, to escape. But he got found out, and the Nazis then just shot him. Simple as. They, they realised he'd let these people go, and they just shot him. So, of course, the dog in the past life, the guard dog, was then completely bereft this dog had spent 24 hours a day with the with the man with the guard and mm -hmm. suddenly he's gone so of course that was massively traumatic for the dog in the past life and that was the past life experience that we worked in in our first session so um my friend came out of trance and was really quite shocked by this and I saw her a couple of weeks later for the next session, and she said there has been a definite improvement in the dog's behaviour in the last two weeks since we did the session. She said she's just a lot calmer. And she said the weird thing is, two weird things. She said when I take her out into the fields to go walking, mm. she said I'm walking through the centre of the fields, and she said the dog walks around the perimeter of the field looking through the hedges all the time. And it's just like what the dog was doing as a guard dog around that prison camp, going around the barbed wire um, perimeter all the time. The dog was continuing to do that in this lifetime. So she said that answers. I've always wondered why she did that. She's just all the time going around these the the, the hedges on the outside of the, the fields. 
Um, but she said, the wonderful thing is she stopped following me around. She said, she's been like my shadow. You know, I'll be in the kitchen and suddenly I'll turn and the dog's at my feet and I'll fall over the flipping dog. She said she's not doing that anymore. She's backing off. She's she's happy. If she knows I'm there, she doesn't come to me like she did do. So we did a second session. And in the second session, we cleared some of the dog's traumas from this lifetime, where mm -hmm. she'd been badly beaten and then she'd been hit badly with, a, with an axe, even in her face. Um, and then we did a third session. And at the third session, uh, my client said, after our last session, Steve, I went downstairs and the dog was joyful. I have all the evening after the session, me and my boyfriend, she was just joyful all the time. And bear in mind the the dog wasn't listening to the session. She's in a different part of the house. So there could be no placebo effect there. No, the dog um, doesn't know that this is what you're working on, right? Exactly. Amazing. <laughs> So she said she was joyful and her, her behavior is improving. She's less difficult. In the third session, they went into a very strange past life where it was an off-planet past life. So both my client and the dog were living as other life forms in another part of the universe. Um, and they were both on some sort of mission in a spacecraft, as like, as like uh, soldiers, you could say, or military. Um, and they came back to their home planet after several months of being away. And as they arrived back at the, the city and the, the spacecraft docked, it was deserted. The whole city was deserted. There was nobody around. And as they got into the city, they couldn't find anybody. And then suddenly, from out of nowhere, this weird green gas appeared. And it went over them and, and asphyxiated them and killed them. So that was the trauma in the past life. Um, so again, we've released those past lives and the stuff in this life, and the dog's behavior is miles better. She's so happy with the difference uh, in, in the dog. So that sort of started me with this surrogate stuff. And since then, I've seen other clients, and it's, again, been very successful. And I know you've had a, a really successful one a client recently, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, it's it, it's amazing. It's I mean, it's one thing to work one on one with a client on their stuff, but to be working in the surrogate fashion, and I think it even surprises us sometimes that this is this is amazing how it works. Um, yeah, I have a recent client and um, a mother that I've worked with in the past, and she wanted to work with her her daughter, her young daughter who was having issues with her skin. So kind of just you know. Uh, like a skin condition, not a dryness or anything, but red, like a red rash, right? And dots that are kind of all on the shoulders, all all down the arms affecting um, this girl's confidence um, because, you know, she can't wear anything without all of this being exposed. And she went kind of other routes. They tried seeing a naturopath. They tried cutting out gluten to try and see if it was something that maybe she was eating that was causing the skin irritation. And nothing, nothing, it wouldn't, wouldn't budge, you know, different topical creams, um, nothing would work. Um, so we had talked about surrogate sessions, and she wanted to try it for her daughter. So we did, and she's very, very connected to her daughter. Um, and I think that's something else that is important to note too, right, Steve, that there has to be that connection, you can't just go do this, you know, for your neighbor that you have no um, yeah. sort of connection with. Um, so guided my client into trance and taking her back into her daughter. And there were two things that we need to go into um, this life, into the daughter's time in the womb and a past life. And so the womb experience was, was particularly interesting because the mother was going back to her daughter's time in her own womb. So not only was it healing for the daughter, but it was healing for the mother for my client, because when the daughter went back in the womb, she was explaining just being very separated from the mother, not feeling the love. And she was chiming in with her perspective of they thought they were going to lose the baby. And she was terrified to emotionally connect to this baby just to lose the child. So we were coming at it at both sides. And the beautiful thing is the mother received healing from hearing her daughter's point of view and vice versa. 
Um, and then in that same session, we went into a past life. So in this past life, her daughter was a, a young boy that was separated from his family and taken to work on this farm. And there was a lot of grief, a lot of sadness and just, you know, wasting away, wanting illness to claim him. And finally, he couldn't stand living anymore and, and took his own life. And after that session, very powerful session, lots of powerful emotions coming out, um, there was huge, huge reduction. She was even surprised, even having done the work with me on herself, she was very surprised at how quick things were going down. There was still still a bit of a bit of a rush, but the intensity was mm -hmm. starting to go down. And as you know, that just meant that we had more work to do. Um, so the section, second session, we went back, um, and the subconscious wanted to work more on the past. Just break in there, because I mean that's fantastic to do in yeah. one session to work yeah. in the womb and the past life. I mean, it just shows oh, how yeah. quick regression can be at times. It can be oh, such yeah. a fast therapy to do oh, all yeah. that in one session. That's amazing. Sorry, I just I just struck me. Yeah. Oh, it is. it's it's amazing to when you have clients that go and to boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, and then of course they're they're exhausted because they just ran this energetic marathon. I sometimes call it. It's like oh, I know you were just laying there with your eyes closed, but please give yourself some credit because you you just did so much work to get there. Um, yeah, so we went we went back. There was still more work to be done in the past life, which we see often. It's you know, some, sometimes it's clear, sometimes it's not, we have to go back and we explored more in depth. We figured out there was a connection that the mother now was the mother of that child. Then um, we kind of got more background about how they were separated and taken away from each other. Um, and then we went back, we went back into the death and the strangest detail that came out of this is this boy when he was taken away and he was kind of working as this like a work slave at this farm, he was sleeping outside and he was cold sleeping outside in this barn and laying on the hay. And she was experiencing this little boy laying on the hay. And there were these bugs, these mites that she said were, were biting at him and biting at his skin and causing his skin to bleed and to itch and to be all this discomfort from them. Um, and then we, so we went back, we went back as we often do until we go back as many times as we need to, to clear the emotions and went back through the experience. We kind of went back and forth a little bit to earlier in the boy's life and then went um, through the whole thing again and through his death experience. And there was a lot more peace at the end of it. Um, and by that second session, I had chatted with her a couple of days later and she's like you you wouldn't believe how all of a sudden it's healing that this skin condition has been you know when you have something on the skin that's been irritating you for so long it it starts to scar and now all of a sudden it's it's healing and it's going away and not only that but this child has this newfound confidence that we weren't even we weren't even expecting to work on that. We were just working on the skin. And now she has this confidence. She says that I have been seen in her and her anger. She was just had these bursts of anger all the time. And the anger has died down as well. So sometimes there's these things that we're not even targeting that they all play a role. They're all tied together, right? As we know, and, and skin problems are always caused by locked in anger. Mm. Always. So you've coincidentally worked in that uh, yeah. at the same time. Yeah. So that's wonderful. Yeah. And so two, two surrogate sessions and it's yeah. done. Her skin is, her skin is fine. It's back to normal. It's healed. Yeah. So, so like I said, I mean, this surrogate stuff is very exciting for us because it is really new. I mean, we, you yeah. know, we've done thousands and thousands of sessions over the years in standard regression where we take the client back into the emotional roots from the past often in past lifetimes but to be able to do this work on somebody else without that person having to go through this it may be they're too young or they're not well enough or whatever whatever mm -hmm. um and as long as the subconscious is saying it's okay for us to do that then 
the potential is enormous i think and mm -hmm. you know we're still at the early stages in, in doing this work but uh, for us it's very exciting it really is mm -hmm. amazing. The, the future is enormous really if we can do surrogate work in regression and it, and it works that's the main thing we don't want to be doing it if it doesn't work but so far the sessions that we're having it is working mm. And I think that's an important part too, Steve, that you mentioned about the subconscious giving permission, because um, I know people that I've talked to have asked, is it okay? Like, is it okay to do this? I don't, how do we ask permission? So the fact that we can go in and ask permission that it's okay, or that it's maybe not for that person to clear, maybe it's their journey, they're supposed to clear it on their own. So the fact that we can work in this way that, um, is also ethical too. We're not we're not forcing <laughs> this on on the other person that's involved. Good point. Very good point. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. So we um, watch this space, and you know, hopefully there'll be more of these stories to come in future months, future years. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks, Monique. Mm -hmm. Thanks for uh, sharing that. That's a, fant a fantastic and fascinating story. Yeah, thank you. Okay, hope you've enjoyed listening to us. Uh, keep tuning in for more of our discussions. From Monique and myself, thanks for listening. Bye for now.